Todd, I was uh, reminiscing a little bit the other day. Talk about the, the combination between you and Dale Jarrett. The relationship me and him had going in was, we're going to do this, we're going to win. We're going to be successful and work hard with, with the right people, and um, it was big. Well, Todd Perry, congratulations. I see the tears of joy coming down your face. I know what Daytona means to you. You guys had so much success. You won the biggest races. What did winning the championship mean to Todd Perry? That's what we all race for, is championship trophies. And in 1999, we had a season that was just remarkable. Todd Parrish, just uh, the best in this business. He could look at it, know what we needed, did just a fantastic job. There have been times over the years where I have felt like, where I've struggled, where I felt like, you know what, this lifestyle takes too much out of me. Yeah. Have you ever struggled with that conflict? Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like that the success that I had with my working relationship with my team and things like that actually cost me, you know, the relationship with my wife kids, you know, just being gone, not being there for, for ball games, not being there to pick the kids up from school, just the, the little things that, that add up that you don't realize are really going on or happening until it's too late. You know, it, it starts to wear on you and, you and you're like, it just, it overwhelms you. This just in a NASCAR race up. Todd Parrott, crew chief for the number 43 team in the Sprint Cup Series, has been indefinitely suspended for NASCAR for violating the sanctioning body's substance abuse policy. Todd Parrott is joining us here on the late ship. Letting it be known that I'm not hiding behind anything that I've done. On October 17th last year, you got the, the message that you had failed the drug test. What was your first thought? Um, my first thought was that, you know, I'd done something, you know, I knew I'd done something bad. I was caught. I was guilty, you know, just, um, you know, my first thing I did was, um, after I got the phone call, was called the shop and talked to the HR lady, you know, at Richard Petty. Because um, you'd gotten a call from NASCAR? I got the call, well, I got the call from Aegis. Aegis? Yeah, that, okay. you know, I got the call from the, uh, you know, from the medical examiner. Yep. And um, you know, explaining you know, you know what had happened and what they found, and that I just I, I was wrong. And they had to fire you. They they said they had a zero tolerance. You, you I, understood I, that? Yeah, I understood it. You know, I knew it. You know, it's not something that I'm proud of. You know, but it's something that I'm going to take time uh, to address and fix. I was afraid when I got the phone call. Now I've got to go take the next step. I got to do the things that, you know, I need to do to get Todd Parrott back where he needs to be and restore the faith in my family. How difficult was it for you to, to talk to your dad or to talk to your kids about it? Before it came out at four o'clock in the afternoon yeah. in the media, in the, you know, the press, I wanted the people who I cared about the most to know, you know, what had happened. And, from you directly. From me directly. The next phone call that I made was to my dad, who drove my motor home to Talladega for me and was sitting in the infield at Talladega. Waiting on you. Waiting on me to fly down there. So I had to make that phone call to him and tell him that I wouldn't be there. And why? And that was that was the hard that was a hard one. But this the hardest was to call my mom. You know, as soon as I hung up with him. I called her, you know, so um, I went and saw her th that afternoon. It was emotional, you know, very emotional. And, and then actually the phone calls and the text messages to my kids, you know, you know it's, it's tough. You just, you feel like you let your, you feel like you let everybody down, you know, and it was, um, it was hard, I'm not gonna lie. I want to apologize to my family. Uh, my kids, my wife, uh, my mom, dad, my brother. I, I'm curious, not about the details, but about the road to recovery program. What did, what did you learn about yourself in that process? I want to be a good, good husband and good to my kids. Yeah, I knew that I was a lot better person than was sitting there in front of them and that I had to fix it. There wasn't nobody else that was going to be able to fix it but me. And pray, a lot of, a lot of praying 
you know, you know, I was in a counseling class three days a week for two hours, going through things, and, and I'm a lot better off now. I think spiritually and mentally, I'm a lot stronger than I was four and a half, five months ago. When October 17th, when you got the phone call, were there people that reached out to say, hey, we're behind you? My phone blew up from people who you, you, you don't really think that they, they care or pay attention, but you know, they, the text messages, the phone calls, the people who really care about what you've done and who you are. Not to diminish anybody who reached out, but was there one that's, that really stood out that you were really grateful for? You know, obviously, uh, Dale, we had a lot of respect for each other. Me and him got along like brothers, you know, and we always had each other's back. What was his What was his message to you? Just, um, you know, you're, you're a strong person. You know, you can get through this. Just um, can't wait to see you back at the track. You know, the other one's Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth. You know, those two guys, I got the phone call on Thursday, and I got messages from Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth on Friday. That, so. That's respect. <laughs> yeah, that's respect. I'm glad you're back. Thanks. And Todd, I got to say, it, it takes a true man to uh, to own up. So I got a lot of respect for you for that. I'm going to do everything that I can do to prove everybody that I'm a whole lot better person than this.